Okay, welcome to Kids Paint Night. I'm Miss Cindy, and this week we are doing an Italian door. So this is what it's gonna look like. So take your canvas, make sure it's going this direction. And you wanna take your ochre color, which is like a goldish color. I'm going to use a large flat brush and I'm going to take my ochre. My ochre might be slightly different color than yours because I ran out and I had to hurry up and make this. So don't worry about it. It's not quite the same color. So you're going to take some of your ochre and some brown and you just kind of want to mix the brown in so it's a little streaky look and you don't want to mix it in and blend it completely. Now, you're going to want to paint the entire canvas up and down. I am actually going to turn it on its side and do it side to side, which is upside down actually too, so it's just easier to reach it this way for me. Do whichever way is easier for you, but try to go back and forth like this we want it to have the lines for the background. Okay. So I get paint on the table. Okay. I'm going to do this on the edges first because the edges are always the hardest to get the paint on. Okay. Now I'm going to continue back and forth so it'd be up and down for how the canvas is going to look when it's finished. So you wanted that goldish coloring and you want a little brown in it to look like it's Italian. Try to paint it nice and thin because we don't want any big lumps of paint because they take too long to dry. Wash that off and add a little bit more water to my brush. Brush seems a little too dry. Okay. I'm going to do this side across this way. back up and down. Now, if your door, if your door, where your door is going to go, it doesn't really matter. But the other parts that are showing, if you don't have enough of the brown kind of streaks in it, go ahead and take a little bit of brown and you can add a little bit more like that. So just kind of put it in and then you can just kind of go back over a little bit like that. Oops, didn't get any that time. Okay, so you don't want it real brown, but you do want it to have some brown in it. All right, so now I'm going to turn it back around. See, like I said, this side didn't matter so much because the door is going to be there. Okay, so now what we're going to do, if I were you, I would stop and pause for a little bit and let yours dry. And then after it's dry, then continue on. 
but the next step is to do the red door. So I'm just going to take the red right from here, wet my brush a little bit. Okay, and now just take the red and you're going to need to draw out the door first. I'd go a little less than halfway. The hardest part is to make the straight line. So you can just make it kind of lightly to begin with. Mine's very wiggly. And then you want the top arched. And I always am bad at making an arched shape. All right, so just about like that. All right, so now, I'm going to go back, actually I think I might use the smaller flat brush that I have. Alright, and now I'm going to take the red paint and I am going to fill in the red door. Try to make your line as straight as you can, but I know it's very hard on the edge. We're going to outline it later, so if it's not perfectly straight, it's okay. We can hide it when we add the black. So go ahead and also paint up and down with your paint strokes. You're going to wait for yours to dry, so you're not going to have all this yellow showing through like I do. Up and down. Just like that. Okay. Like I said, you won't have all that yellow showing through because you're going to wait for yours to dry more. I didn't have time though. All right. So now that your red is done, your first layer of red, there's going to be a second layer of red, but your first layer is done, so we're going to let that dry a little bit, and we're going to work on our tree trunk. Let's see, I think I'm going to try this one. All right, so see how the tree it's supposed to be kind of bumpy. It's not supposed to be a real smooth tree. It's the kind of tree it is. So take your brown. I am actually going to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to take a little brown off to the side and a little bit of black. I'm going to try to make a little bit darker of a brown. I'm not going to take it and do the whole pile that way. I'm just going to take a little bit off to the side. Okay, so now, remember, thicker at the bottom for a tree trunk and skinnier at the top. My color is not dry yet, so remember, you're going to wait for yours to dry and you won't have as much of the background showing through it. All right, now we're going to have a crisscross kind of pattern with our trees. So this one's going to kind of go up this way. And then off. Okay. You won't have as much background showing. Make some smaller branches coming out as well. Most of these up here are going to get hidden anyway, so. All right, so kind of like that. You can always take a little bit of the black and kind of work it in 
to darken yours a little bit if it's too light, because mine was coming through too much. Okay. A little too dark now, but it's a little better. Let's see. Okay, we'll just make a little lumpy part there. Okay. You can also take a little bit of the ochre and add some highlights to lighten it as well. Now what we're going to do is we are going to, you're, you're going to wait till your door is completely dry, but I am now going to paint my second layer of paint on my door. I'm going to put it, put it on the dish here. So I'm going to take some red and now I'm going to add a little bit of black. Remember, always add it a little bit at a time so you don't add too much. Now that's not quite dark enough, so I'm going to add a little bit more. We want to create a darker red that looks kind of more antique looking. It's kind of how the whole house looks with the browns and then making the door have more black on it, making it more look more old and antique looking. Okay, so once you get your darker red, go back after your dry, your door is dry, and paint another layer of red. Go up and down again. You want some of the lighter color to show through, but you want it to have that old antique look. It's kind of tricky at the top where the curve is. Okay, kind of like that. All right, now you can see the side here showing a little bit too much. Let me go back over that part. All right, See how it has the, the darker coloring to it? But you still see some of the light through it. That's what we want to make it look more natural. Okay. Oops, now see I went a little too wide, so I'm just gonna go out with it a little bit. Got room to do that though. Okay. So now we're going to work on all these little green bits up here, all of the greenery. We're going to add all of that. What I'm going to see if I can touch up my old painting. It was on top of one of the other ones and it got a little bit of coloring pulled off. Okay. Now I'm going to take a round brush and I'm going to make a couple different shades of green. I'm going to make a slightly darker green here. So I'm going to take some of the green and I'm going to dab a little bit of brown in it make a darker green. Remember add a little bit at a time. To create the darker green. It's up to you how dark you want it. <clears throat> you can even do it with a tiny bit of black. Either one works great. Black, you probably need a little bit less of than the brown. Okay, so we got our darker green. We've got our regular green. Now, I am actually going to do this. Wipe that off. 
I'm also going to make a slightly lighter green. So I'm going to take some green. And I'm going to add a little white to it. To make a slightly lighter green. Just like that. All right, so now actually what I'm going to do though is I'm going to start out with the regular green. I am going to turn my canvas around because I want to be able to reach where all the green parts are. All right, so just like that and I'm going to take the regular green. That's all I'm going to do are make little dabs all over the top. You're just filling it in how big your leaf dab is going to be is going to be depending on what size brush you use and how hard you press down on it. You don't want to fill it in completely where you can't see any of the background. But you want to kind of dab it all over. You want some parts to come down further, some parts to be up higher. You want some parts on the branches because we're going to go back and we're going to dab the flowers on too so you want to leave a little room for the flowers as well so it's all depending on how you dab also on the shapes that yours come out Depends on the brush, how hard you dab it. I find I do better if I don't give it much thought and just dab. If I try to plan it all out, it doesn't come out as good. even do some further down off of these branches. Go along the side here because you want to look like it's all coming down from the top. Hanging down. It's all hanging greenery. So after you're done with the medium, the regular color green, you can go back and actually I'm going to wash this off for a moment. I don't really have to, but I'm going to kind of get my brush back into shape. And now you can do the same thing. You want to accent it with the darker green. So you don't want to go all over as much, but you just kind of want to add your accents so you have more than one coloring down so you're going to do the same thing with the dark then you're going to go back and you're going to do the same thing with the light one to make some highlights I said it's just up to you on how many you want little dabs all over. All right, did the darker one. Now I'm going to go back, wash off my brush, and now I'm going to do the lighter green. And that's just going to add some little highlights here and there. not giving it much thought, just kind of randomly dabbing it here and there for highlights. Okay. All right. So now you can always go back and add more. I'm going to turn this back around 
And now we're going to outline the door while we're letting our green dry. So I'm going to take a skinnier brush. It's going to be the trickiest part. And straight black right on the tip. And now you're going to want to outline the door. This is the hardest because you got to try to keep a straight line. And not too thick. I would use your skinniest brush you have to try to do this. Turn this around to be able to reach it better. Okay, now we also are going to need the little parts of our door that make it kind of fancy, which is like where the hinges are. So I'm going to make a line about that big, about an inch or so, and then I'm going to make a little swirly on one side and the other side. make it less fancy. You are going to not have that happen where my red is showing through because you're going to wait till your red is dry. Not like I who do not. Okay. So it's kind of a little fancy pattern and then it had kind of a circle down at the end. All right. So that's like where the hinge is for the door. Now do the same thing farther down. Try to get the two to look the same, which isn't always that easy. So need a handle. So for the handle, kind of want to make a little curve, and then the part that's attached. Kind of about like that. All right, not too bad. I'm going to turn it back around then. You're going to let yours dry a while because I know my green is not dry. But now we're going to make this red for the flowers. We're going to do the dabbing on. I actually got to fix mine while I'm here. Okay. Mine got caught on the painting that was underneath it. There we go. I hide, hit that right up. Okay, fixed my old one. All right, so the next thing is to make the flowers. 
So what you're going to do is you're going to start out with just red, just the plain old red. Now, my green is very wet up here still. So remember, wait for yours to dry before you do this step. I'm going to try to do it where I'm looking for the drier patches. But basically, you're just kind of making like a little cluster of flowers that you kind of want it to hang down, or hanging flowers, kind of almost like a cluster of grapes dangling down. Let's kind of look for some empty spots that you might have left. And that would be a good area to dab your flowers because there'll be plenty of room. This one I'm gonna make bigger. So see how you're just kind of dabbing it, coming down so it look like a cluster of dangling flowers. Don't do them all the same size, kind of have some bigger, longer, some shorter. flowers up there. I'm going to have some down on the side here too. Okay. And then you're going to go back and you can take a little bit of your dark red that you made for the door with a little bit of black in it. And you can make a few little dabs of that in there just to add some little accents, little highlights to it. You wanna cover up all the prettier red with the darker red, but you just wanna add a few here and there. Because when you look at flowers, they're not all the same color, even on a bunch like that. Usually they change colors as they're opening and then dying off. Just kind of make a few dabs here and there with it, okay? All right. Oopsie daisy. Now, I think that is it. I think our painting is finished. So turn it around, check it out, make sure you did everything. You could go back with the skinny brush and you could make a few more accents in your um, tree trunk if you want. You could either take this little bit of the ochre color and kind of streak it in, or you can take some of the darker color and streak it in like that. Either one, it's up to you. Need to put a little bit of light on top of the darker. All right. All right, that is done. We are finished. Don't forget to put your initials in on it. And don't forget to send me a copy of it so I can see what it looks like because I love to see your guys painting, okay? All right, thank you, and I'll see you next week.